Hello everyone, and welcome to this script case macros course. So this is a course where we go through and we talk about every single macro that script case has. So script case has about 130 macros. They're all documented in the documentation, which we're going to look at. But in this series, we're going to look at what they are and how they use them. So I'm going to be providing lots of examples for how they use them. So today we're going to be looking at database transaction macros in this video. My name is Nate Carpenter and I'm the script case instructor doing this course. So let's get started with database transaction macros. So if you're not familiar with database transactions or transactional databases, we first need to look at normal execution of an SQL statement. So we're going to be using SQL for the purposes of this course. So let me go on to the next slide here. So under normal database execution, you define an SQL statement. So you can do that in uh, PHP. Um, and then after you define it, then you execute that and it is ran against the databases. So any changes made in that SQL statement are then reflected in the actual database itself. So that's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. However, what if there is an error with some of the data and we need to roll back those transactions? That's where transactional databases come in. So let's look at how transactional database execution works here in the next slide. So first we need to begin the transactions. So that's our first step. And then just like before, we define our SQL statement. And just like before, we execute our SQL statement. And then we have the opportunity to check for errors at any point in this process. So we can check for errors before we execute or after we execute, however we want to do that. And then we can do some conditional logic based on whether there was an error or not. So if there's no errors, then we can commit all those transactions, however many we want, and then they're actually reflected in the database. Or if there is an error, then we can roll back those transactions like so. And you notice I have some item, some items here in a different color. And those are the items that script case then provides macros for so that we can use transactional database logic inside of script case. So the first macro we have is to begin the transaction. And then the other two are either to commit the transaction or roll back the transaction. So those are three different macros that we're going to look at. So I have them right here. So these are the names of them, SC begin trans, so the begin the transaction, SC commit trans to commit the transactions, and then SC rollback trans to roll them back. So let's go and look at the script case documentation to get a feel for how that works. And then we'll get a feel for actually how to do this inside of script case. And I'll provide you some good examples. So we'll go over here to the script case homepage right here. So scriptcase.net. And this is just if you're unfamiliar with the documentation. To get to that, you can go to eLearning and then documentation right here. You can also access this inside of your script case development environment. It's included on a, on your local server or development machine. You can download the PDF, you can download a zip, or you can just read it online. You can select your language if you want a different language. So let's go to the online one. And over here is all of our different tabs here. We need to go to macros here. We can do a general view to kind of explain what macros are. And then you also have a macros applications events to kind of show you when you can execute certain macros on certain applications um, in, those, in those different events. To, to see the macros themselves, we can go to macros right here. And right up top here, we have all the macros listed by category here. The first one here is actually our SC begin trans right here. So we can click that. And it will take us to the documentation for that. So we have some info for that one. And then um, also a, a table here showing us when we can execute it on these different applications, such as a blank calendar, chart, grid, etc., on these different events right here. So that's the script case documentation. And those are those transactions. Let's get into how to actually use them. So let's go over to our script case development environment and start putting this into practice. Okay, so here we are in the script case development environment and we're in the samples project. It can be in any project though. And we have a blank application here called transaction demo. And a blank application is just a place to put some code. This code could go really in any application, uh, but we're putting in a blank application and we have our array of data here. And this is just hard coded, but it could be from anywhere. It could be from a file, an email, an API request, anywhere. But the key element is that it is not validated. There could be errors in this data. So we need to check for those errors, which is why we have this found error boolean right here. And then we loop through that data. 
and then we check to make sure that there's a value for each of those fields, first name, last name, and phone number. And if there is, then we can insert into the database. So we run this insert statement here, just a basic insert into our employees table, all those values right there, and then we execute that SQL right there. If there is an error, so that if statement fails, then we go into the else, we set found error to true, and then we break out of that loop. So we break out of that loop, and it falls out either because it was successful and inserted everything, or it found an error. So if an error was found, then we echo that an error was found. Otherwise, we say there were no errors. So that's just a basic example of this. So let's run this. This is the standard SQL execution, no transactions yet, so there are no errors. Let's change our data and introduce an error. So I'm going to take out the first name of that last record there. So it's going to fail on that if condition. So let's run this, and it found an error. So that works all right. However, all of these rows right here were already inserted. So in order to make sure that that last row is inserted, we have to change the data now when we re-request it. We have to take all these rows and delete them, which can be a problem if you're inserting a big, uh, um, a big Excel file or doing an API request or something. So this is where our transactional database is going to come in helpful so that we can roll back all those old transactions. So here in the documentation, we're going to start with our begin transaction so we can begin them. So here's that documentation that I showed you earlier. And there's where we can execute this macro. And the connection parameter is optional. I just want to point that out. If you have multiple connections in your development system, you can, you can define which one you want. We're not going to use that today. And then it also has the other two transactions related to it, the other two macros related to it. So let's copy that. And we're going to put that right at the beginning here before we do any of our SQL statements. So copy that and put the close parentheses there and the semicolon and format it nicely. So now any of those SQL statements ran after it are going to be part of those transactions there and not just executed in the normal execution. So now we need to determine what happens when there is an error and when there isn't an error. So successful or an error condition. So let's scroll back up to the top of our documentation and let's start with successful. So SC commit trans. So this is when there were no errors and we need to tell it to actually write all those transactions to the database. So there's an example of that. And if we're going to redirect, we need to make sure we redirect after we commit the transactions, not before, so that it actually happens. So let's go ahead and copy our commit trans macro there. And there's where it can be executed, just like before. And we're going to put that here in the successful else here. Put it right before the output. So we commit the transactions and then echo no errors. So that's going to be done, and we are committing the transactions there. Now we need to handle when there is an error, so we roll back the transactions. So let's scroll back up to the top here and find that macro. There it is, SC rollback transactions. Same as before, uh, pretty simple. The connection parameter is optional. It can be executed there. So we're in a blank application on execute. This is where we are. So copy that, and we're going to paste it in just like on the commit transactions. Put the open and close parentheses and the semicolon. And so now this should work. This is now our transactional database interaction. So let's go ahead and run this. And there were no errors. So it wrote everything just fine. There were no errors. Let's introduce our error again and run it again. And there was an error found, which means that it rolled back the transactions. So now none of these records were written to the database. So all the user needs to do is fix the error like so and then resubmit all the data without having to delete the rows that had the error. So that's how you do transactional database logic inside of Scriptcase using these Scriptcase macros. So I hope you continue watching this course and see other ways that these macros can help your development.